Um, so thank you for in, uh, to my talk. Uh, my talk is going to be on um, effective communication for developers, or uh, basically how I learned to stop worrying about things and talk to my colleagues. So my name is Mike Bell. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at Mike Bell. It, is it possible? Uh, these slides aren't really showing up very well. Um, is it possible to turn the lights, lights off? Or yeah. Down. Or at least turn the front set off. <laughs> that's slightly bad. Um, <laughs> and that's just, and now I'm speaking to a disembodied audience. <laughs> um, can everybody at the back see that? Yeah. Is that alright? Alright, excellent. So I'm Mike Bell on Twitter, Mike Bell on Drupal.org, Mike Bell on GitHub, and I work for CTI Digital, which is great considering most of my colleagues are in this room. <laughs> So, to give you some background to this talk, um, I feel that developers' roles are changing. Um, we have more involvement in the code we're producing and businesses we work for. Um, there's an investment on a personal level, and it also helps with our personal development to get invested in the projects that we're doing. We're no longer code monkeys, we no longer are the people that sit at keyboards for 9 to 5, tapping away, listening to music, ignoring the world around us. And to be honest, it's about time, we should stop acting like that. You, we have to have this thing where you have to be proud of something you built, otherwise there's no job satisfaction there. So you get behind the product, you start believing in it, you make something that you're proud of, something that you would show the people and say, look, I made this, it does this, it's pretty cool. And because you make your code better, you also limit your technical debt in the long run, which is something that everybody likes and will make your friends a lot more. So, a quick question, is anyone here doing Agile uh, in the workplace? No, that's quite interesting. Interesting how like half my colleagues, which are doing Agile, haven't got a hand. I think sometimes people see Agile as literally bending over backwards and being as awkward as possible, which is quite handily illustrated in the photo. Um, and I mean, if you are, then you know that Agile requires communication. On a daily basis, you have Scrum meetings, you're constantly in contact with your team, you're always talking. And because of this, there's now a bigger reliance on develop developers and their ability to communicate well. You have to be able to communicate solutions to the developers. You might have a solution, but you might necessarily be the one that's actually coding it. So you have to articulate that to other developers so they can provide your solution. You also get a bigger chance to affect the final product. When you become involved in stakeholder meetings and meetings where you meet the client and talk to them about their requirements, you can actually affect the final product. If there is something that they need or they don't necessarily need, you have that opportunity to talk to them and say, well, how about this solution? What about doing this? It also actually allows you to spend more time on problems because you communicate with your team better and if you do have a problem, you're no longer isolated. You can quite happily talk and discuss these problems and come to solutions in the team which ultimately means that you get development done quicker. So one of the things that we do as developers as an issue, we have get given a set of problems, whether this is in the form of we need to provide the task for a user story or whether we actually have some technical problem we need to solve. We do this every day and we're all fairly used to it. But the thing is, some people have issues articulating problems. I certainly did at one point actually describing a problem to, I say, a normal person, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but I mean a, a non-technical person. Learning how to do this effectively is, is such a key skill to communicating well as a developer. If you can break the problem down into smaller chunks, that's brilliant, because then you have a set chunk of work that needs to be done as part of solving this problem. You also have to learn how to express things in a way that an audience understands. 
So me explaining this to you is a prime example of me as a developer having to solve a problem. You have to think who you're delivering it to. So when you're talking to people, they're not necessarily going to understand PHP or HTML, CSS, or very what you're on about when you talk about servers. They don't necessarily understand the language or the paradigm, so you have to break it down and make it simple and easy enough for your grandmother to understand. And I think this is where examples are really important here. So if you can, you should use examples. So if there is a situation where it maps directly to a real life situation, then use it. Coming up with examples is often a great way of actually solving the problem as well. So if you try and simplify it and you think of it, and then all of a sudden you actually have a solution to the problem, it's like I have a thing with bathroom solving. So like if I'm on a if I have a very technical issue that I can't get after a few hours, you just literally step away from your machine and within five minutes usually you'll have a solution at which point you're kicking yourself. It also helps when you break things down into examples to convert these over um, from user stories into tasks. So if you're given a user story in which you are, it's quite big and technical, then by explaining into examples you're defining stories. I mean, who's familiar with the, um, I think it's as a, I want to, because. If you can break your problems down into these three things, you're close to the solution already. And it also gives the client an easy way to see what you're trying to achieve. One thing that is also very important when um, developing your communication skills is to avoid the never-ending meeting. I'm pretty sure most people in this room will have had the never-ending meeting. And this is where you as a developer, you're an active part of that meeting. You're not just sat at the back, twiddling your thumbs, waiting for some project manager or management to turn around and say, so like, what do you think about this? If you have to describe something, keep it concise and to the point. Often, you don't need to articulate the full um, solution in these meetings. They're looking for understanding, not implementation. And most of all, just stay on topic. Don't go off topic. It may be good to do that every now and then, but ultimately, if a meeting goes long, runs on long, then chances are people are going to lose interest and then the meeting just runs away. Another thing is people. You have to know the enemy. But they're not really the enemy. People around you, they're your colleagues, your friends, your client, your boss. And you have to get to know them properly. I'm pretty sure most people can recognize the people on here for doing this is from Drupal Camp last year. You get put against certain personality types. And it's kind of up to you to figure out the personality types you're with. You have to read the situation and emotions in these in the situations. It's kind of key to conflict resolution as well, because if you do get into a situation where you find you're arguing with a colleague, um, prime example would be my colleague Matt, who's giving the presentation. We're known for arguing together in a very good-natured way. Uh, we're both very, very sort of. We like to think we're both right, but, that one. <laughs> but the idea is to know when I'm not right and to be able to back down from that and let others' opinions override mine. Everybody's opinion is valid and that's key to solving conflict. You can often change the situation by just taking a step back, thinking about what's going on and then realising, you know what, let's just leave this here, we can always come back to it later if you've not found a solution yet. It doesn't have to be done just that second, unless it's an emergency and the place is burning down. Um, so it's often useful to just take a step back. You also have to realise boundaries. So there's a certain limit to being friendly and telling the old joke. But it's definite limits, and it's such a, probably the most important things with these things is to learn where your boundaries lie with colleagues, clients, and management. 
So I've got two examples of personality types that most people will have come across in various different situations. So the first one is the know-it-all. So these are the people that they think they know it all and they will quite happily tell you that they know it all. They're often very confrontational, um, so they won't be afraid to tell you their opinion. And they often don't take criticism very well. But these people are actually nice people. They just, the way they come across is different. And the way you can be helpful in these situations when coming across these people is to explain your solutions. You have patience with these people and be logical as well because ultimately they thrive on logic. And if you can articulate your problem and explain your solutions as logically as possible, often you'll find that things are fine. Another example is the quiet one in the corner. So every now and then you will be somewhere and there will be somebody that's a bit socially awkward, but they're brilliant. They're technically brilliant, but they're unspoken, they're quiet, they won't speak up. And in these situations, encouragement. If you see somebody like this, then just talk to them. And positive reinforcement as well. These people often have great ideas. It's just they don't they don't have the platform to articulate them. And through encouragement, you kind of bring them out of their shell. And I think this is something that is very, very important. Every company and community has these types. I've worked in various different companies with these people. I've seen them in Drupal community, I've seen them in PHP community, everywhere. It's something that you can't escape. But this is where you come in and you know that you can deal with these people and you can help them and there's no, there's no problem there. And knowing how to deal with it is very, very important. Now this is a good one, it's the dealing with management. So I'm guessing most developers are not their own boss, or if they're freelancing then they will have to report to somebody on a job. And these will be classed as the management. They're not evil. Um, they may seem it, they may seem it in their offices, their separate offices, they may seem removed from the company. But ultimately, the management have a role to play. They're there to help. They're there to do the crap that, to be honest, we don't really want to do, and stuff we don't want to be interested in. So realizing that they're not evil and getting on with management is fine. A kind of an odd thing, um, that most developers don't realize is that saying no is actually okay. It's not a bad thing to say. If somebody asks you to do something, saying no is okay. When you become more invested in a project and people realize you're more invested, saying no becomes a very important tool. It can also earn you trust and confidence with people. So if you're in client meetings and there is a ridiculous requirement of they would like the Eiffel Tower building into the website, you can turn around and say no. But it's not quite good enough. And I think this is this is great follow up to just being able to say no. You have to be able to back up your stance of why you're saying no. And if you say no, you have to provide a solution as well. One of the most important things and one of the, the most annoying thing for me in meetings and such is when people disagree with opinion but don't put up a valid opinion beside that. Because it's not helpful to the situation by just shooting down ideas without putting forward a new solution. And if you do say no and you do put forward a new solution, be confident in that. You wouldn't have said it if you didn't think so. This is also another great one for developers, um, and it's not contrasted very well, but I'll read through it anyway. Um, being able to say, I don't know. It's the hardest thing a developer will ever say. Um, we don't like to admit we're wrong, or we don't like to know, uh, we don't like to admit that we don't know how to do something. 
it's not a bad thing to say I don't know. It makes you a better developer. If you ask some, if somebody asks you something and you don't know, then that's fine. If somebody explains it to you, then you know how to do it and you've learned from that. By sitting back and saying I don't know and not learning anything, you're not doing anybody any good. And saying I don't know allows others to be aware of where your skills are. So if you if you don't know much about theming, for example, and you don't and you don't know much about it, then you'll be known that that's the case. So nobody's going to try and throw a theme work at you. But as long as, if you have a vested interest in that, you can say I don't know, and then somebody will teach you. Criticism. It's also another thing developers don't like. And it's fairly simple. You have to learn how to take it. People will always be quite happy to dole out as much criticism as people are willing to listen to. Criticism may appear bad on the face of it, but even the bad is good. You have to reflect on what you've been told and kind of take a step back and realise, well actually, was son's, what son's are saying actually right? Were, were, is their criticism valid? People generally don't criticise just for the sake of it. I'd like to think they didn't. You also have to learn how to give criticism as well. Don't just criticise without a valid reason. So if somebody is doing something wrong, or you want to help somebody out with something, as long as that's valid, then it's fine. You have to be able to open a dialogue with these people as well. So talking things through, if you do give criticism and they would like feedback on why you gave that criticism, then opening the dialogue is brilliant. Because then you get to discuss things, and often both of you will come out of that situation better than you went in. A kind of key thing for the communication also comes over to code as well. So, documentation is something we all hate. Nobody really likes doing it as a developer. And it is a skill. It's something that it does take time to kind of learn and get into the sort of the flow of it. But this is where communication skills come in because you know how to express problems, you know how to break problems into smaller chunks, you can describe them well. So translate that into your code. I mean, good code plus good documentation will make you new friends. Developers that take on your code or will automatically be a lot happier to see well documented code. And ultimately, it helps in the long run. If you do it now and then a year down the line, you come back and look at code, you'll thank yourself for writing good code, for writing good comments. You probably won't thank yourself for writing good code because, let's face it, who in a year's time will look back at the code now and think, you know what, that was brilliant. <laughs> Public speaking is also a really, really good way of actually boosting confidence and learning how to communicate. It's a huge confidence boost. It's why I'm here now. I'm a developer at heart, and I kind of just decided that I would like to speak. It gets your profile out now. I mean, I can't tell you how important it is for jobs to get your name out there in front of people. You also get to, need to meet new people. I can look around the room, and I can confidently say I know 75% of the people in the room because I've met people at these kind of events and I've spoken at these kind of events. And the communication skills I'm learning now and still learning as part of doing these talks is transferable. So I, I can take these into meetings during the, mid, during the week and not be phased by leading meetings. I've led meetings with CEOs that are old enough to be my parents and still not being worried about that because I have the confidence to come and do these things. It's also fun. I mean, I enjoy doing this. I get a kick out of doing it. I, get, I enjoy speaking to people. I enjoy the feedback I get afterwards of how I can improve and how I can make these things better. If by now people are yawning, probably presenting's not for you. 
Another interesting thing that I was talking with Lorna about today is practicing. I generally don't like to practice my talks. Um, and that all depends on your confidence levels. I know that some of the times I'm not as good as I should be. But I do believe it has certain benefits. I think you can focus on the points that you're more confident about and you do get the opportunity to ramble on a bit about certain things that you're passionate about. I remember seeing Robert Douglas back in the original Drupal camp, Manchester, rambling on for two hours about Apache Solar. And that to me was the epitome of presenting because he was there to sell Acquia and then it just went into code, which was brilliant. And I saw how passionate he was about that and that was totally off the cuff. It also allows you to avoid points you're less confident in, but you feel should be in there anyway. Often, if I'm doing a technical talk, there will be bits that I'm not overly confident on, but I do believe the audience should at least have a passing knowledge of, so I will put that in and gloss over it. But I will kind of append this with, you should always practice your talk, especially if you're not as confident, because some things go, do go wrong. Live demos are a great example. An interesting thing of how I started out doing these things was by actually faking confidence. I wasn't a very confident person. I never imagined three years ago that I would be stood up at these events doing talks like this. And how I started out was by basically telling myself that I could do it and saying to myself, even though I can't do it, I'll go up there and do it because I think I can do it. And by doing that, I think the mind is a very powerful thing. I think that has kind of helped me realize that I can actually do these things. And it kind of tricks yourself into it. It's, it's a weird thing. I mean, it's, it works. And learn to enjoy it. I think if you enjoy doing something, you should do it more. I mean, we like to code. I'm assuming we all like to code, so we do it because we enjoy it. And I think as part of acting and sort of communication online, which is always a touchy subject and is always very difficult for people. The general rules of social media, just don't be an idiot. When speaking on Twitter, 140 characters isn't a lot to articulate yourself. Think before posting anything. I think with certain personality types, they can come across very badly and it would all help if you just thought and realised the impact of what you might say. And generally, ignore trolling. There will always be trolling on the internet. It's what has been there since the VBS boards and will be there long before, long after something's replaced the internet. But it doesn't mean that social media isn't incredibly useful. Use it to your advantage. A great tool is IRC. I, you get to talk to new people, and you get to meet new people that are not necessarily in your social circle, or they're not in your work circle, or they're not even in the same country as you. And you can use social media to connect with people that you wouldn't necessarily talk to. Um, I think I've got contacts all over the world with people that I would never in a million years have imagined speaking to. And I see people here that I will only ever see once or twice a year. So to summarize my talk, basically, get involved with the community. The community is very important and I think through that you'll boost communication. By talking to people, it makes you more confident. It makes things a lot easier. And the more comfortable you become doing these things, the easier it becomes. And it's all transferable. Take risks. A great thing to do is lightning talks. So if you've got a local user group or anything, like a bar camp or anything, go along. Lightning talks are usually 5, 10, 15 minutes. You get to talk about a subject you're passionate in. You don't necessarily need to prepare a long hour long talk. 
it's a great way to get started in these things. <clears throat> Don't be afraid to go up to people and talk to them. There's a great social tonight and meet people. Go say hi. Don't forget to smile as well. <laughs> Smiling is very important. If you're not smiling, then people think something's wrong. So that's kind of my talk. Um, it's probably a bit short. Yep. Um, but if anybody has any questions, we are more than happy to answer. Yep. What advice would you give someone who wanted to get into the community but really doesn't want to get into public speaking? Okay, so what advice would I give to people that want to get into the community but really don't want to get into speaking? IRC, Google Groups, look for your local community, go along, attend a few sessions. I know in Manchester there's NWD, because that's because I help run it. And um, there's PHP Northwest. I know in London they have great spaces. I know in Barcelona they do. All over the world there are events going on in every single major city. You just have to find them. Meetup.com is a really good place for these things. Um, Lanyard as well. <coughs> just search the keyword you're interested in and your location, you'll find something out there. Any questions? Okay, thank you very much.